religious zealotry. <laughs> Let's have a talk about that. Mm, that's a good one. So I actually did a post yesterday, which I, I deleted this morning. Now, I just want to say I was already going to delete it because I had had a look at it and I wasn't happy with it. It was done in a real hurry and the lighting in it is terrible. Um, and I actually got a text last night as I was going to bed from somebody saying, you know, the lighting in today's video is really rubbish, just letting you know. Um, so I was kind of like, yeah, all right, um, because someone else has confirmed it. Um, I was going to delete it this morning anyway. But, um, you know, I even had the thought, I thought maybe I'll just delete it now and I thought, oh no, I can't be bothered. I'll just do it when I wake up in the morning. Um, and I'm so glad I waited because when I went to go into it this morning to delete it, I got my first troll. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> moving on up in the world. Um, yes, and it was from a, uh, I'm going to say, a Bible basher. Okay, um, and I, I know them very well. Okay, I know them very well. <laughs> I grew up in a very, very religious family. Okay, um, so what all I'm going to say, I don't want to give you too much of my attention, but just in case you do come back and watch another video, um, although I don't know why you would if you find it that offensive. Look, who did Jesus choose to spend his time with? Yeah? And who did he have a really, really strong dislike of? The Pharisees, right? People who knew the book by the letter, right? And it didn't mean S-H-I-T because their hearts weren't right. What is the use of having all the knowledge if your heart's not right? I did a reading on this very, very recently, actually. Right? He would sooner have dinner with a tax collector than with the Pharisees. Hmm? And I don't know how well the tax collectors were able to quote from the Bible. Uh, I'm going to say probably not much. Um, and I, I have to say it. I mean, there are, there are people who say Mary Magdalene was his favorite. We'll never know. But it does specifically say that when he came back from the dead, Mary, Mary Magdalene was the first person that he chose to present himself to. Yeah? So she was extremely special to him. He loved her. Even though... When he met her, she had seven demons inside her. Seven demons. That is a lot. That's a lot of demons. And I don't know what that looked like. You know, in, in the physical sense, I don't know what that looked like. I'm going to say not great. You know, when we talk about people who are battling their demons, um, you know, it's so funny. People use that expression all the time and they think that they're using it figuratively. And they're not. You know, they actually are battling demons. Um, and it's there in the language, hiding in plain sight. Um, so I don't know what that looked like for her, um, but whatever it was, he saw beyond that and he saw her heart and he loved her, yeah? Um, so you have no right to assume that you know who Jesus loves and why, or even how he chooses to present himself to these people, okay? Um, and, and, you know, the red, big red flag for me, well, firstly, as an empath, I feel energy, so... I read what you said, but I felt what you said much more, yeah? I felt that energy, and I, I won't describe it, um, but the fact that you use the word hate, that's a red flag right there. Mm? I don't recall ever hearing Jesus use that word. Um, and, you know, just quickly before I, I do move on, um, if you go back to my channel, you'll see me talk. I did an entire reading, actually, about a 27-minute reading, I think, on forgiveness uh, about a week ago, maybe. Have a look at it. It's there in the title. Uh, there is also a, a video called Beautiful Human where I talk about not judging people. And that's actually the one time that I did quote from the Bible in that reading. Yeah, and I was talking about not judging people. And it's actually something that I've talked about quite a lot in my readings. Do not judge. Yeah, if you want to quote him, judge not lest ye be judged. Yeah, forgive, don't judge. Those are the two things that you'll see I talk about a lot on my channel. Yeah, who said that? Who was it? Yeah. Um, so please, I don't know, get some eye drops and maybe, um, you know, wash out the speck in your own eye first, love, yeah? Okay, um, so I wanted to, I think that was all I needed to say about that. Just a very quick message, um, and the reason for this is that I had started on a new case uh, last night, and it is huge. This is a monumental, um, a large mass of energy that I'm going to have to move, uh, so it's going to take a lot of my energy. Uh, so I don't know how much I'm going to be posting after today. Um, it, I mean, I'll just do it whenever I feel um, it's, it's right, basically. And I have been excused, so I have checked with them. Um, 
And for anybody watching this who, um, oh, just very, very quickly, yes, there, there is something I wanted to say. Uh, I'll say it quickly and then I'll come back to this. Um, you know, be careful with quoting from a book as well that is that old, especially when Jesus came, came and taught a lot of new things, right? So there are some teachings which are timeless. Pretty much everything Jesus said is timeless, okay? Um, in the same way that when we, you know, would you let your kids play with matches? No. But adults can, yeah. If you were to have a manual for for children, which um, you know, I guess philosophically speaking, spiritually speaking, that's what people were uh, in the Old Testament. You know, um, you're not going to have the same manual for children that you're going to have for adults. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Uh, I mean, it's okay for you to believe it for you, but don't go and tell other people that they have to believe every single letter in that. Yeah, and there are also people who believe that things were omitted. Going back to Mary Magdalene, you know, um, we don't know much about her story. You know, these seven demons, I'd love to know, you know, how they manifested, but we don't know. We don't know her story. You know, and there are people who say that she did actually have an account um, and it just never saw the light of day. And that's all I'll say about that. Um, okay, so, and that does not make my love or my commitment to God any less than yours. Uh, FYI, I pray every morning. Not only pray, I get on my knees. Every morning, I get on my knees, head to the floor, bow down in complete submission to God, in complete submission to Jesus, just so you're aware of that, okay? And I'm praying all throughout the day as I do my things, and I pray every night, and I meditate every night. When I meditate, I mean I connect with God at a very, very deep spiritual level, okay? Um, so I do just want to say that. Um, you, just, you never know who you're talking to, okay? Um, so now, yes, the, the message that I, I want to give you today... It was from Archangel Michael, and it was only a quick one last night because it came at the end of a very huge energy healing session, and um, he was very direct with it. You know, so go back and have a look at some of my recent posts, and you'll see that he can be very poetic. Not this time, okay? So he's being very economical with um, with his time, my time, energy, etc. And for anyone who thinks what you're talking about, talking to angels. It is in the Bible too, okay? So that's fine. Um, I'm assuming, don't get your knickers in a twist, okay? So we have, um, you know, in the book of Daniel, yeah? Gabriel came to Daniel with a message that was delayed. And he says, I'm sorry, I meant to get this to you earlier, um, but I got caught up by a demon. I got, you know, held back by, held up with a demon. And I was waiting for Michael, basically, to come and rescue me, yeah? And Michael, obviously, was waiting for the directive from God, yeah? So, um... It is not um, outside of the rules <laughs> uh, to be spoken to by angels, okay? So what Michael asked me um, really quickly, because I don't want this to, re uh, to go past 10 minutes, was for you, for everybody who watches this message, to please, basically, I should have probably had this ready first, start with a blank sheet of paper, completely blank, wipe out, um, or forget, Everything that you thought you wanted, everything you thought was important to you, that you were working towards, um, I want you to basically press reset. He wants you to, sorry. And he wants you to sit with your heart every night before bed, just for five minutes, okay? Five minutes, that's all it is. So it's not a huge commitment he's asking for. And to ask God to speak to you in your heart about your heart's true desire, okay? So... A lot of people at the moment are still pursuing things that an expired version of them thought they wanted, okay? Uh, and sometimes you go so far with something, it almost feels like, I, I can't turn back now. You know, I've been, I've been going for this for so long. I've been wanting this for so long. I've been working towards this for so long. Um, so it is, it's not easy, especially when you don't know where God wants you to go to instead, so he said to please, and, and I have something of myself actually that I, you know, there is a resistance there, but something that I know that I need to release. So I'm doing it too, okay? Um, we can all do it together. But um, he wants you to do that, and he was very clear about saying, please don't tell them to put in binaural beats, because I would have. I would have said, there's some lovely heart chakra meditations. No, no, because then you still can't hear. No noise, right? So when you first start, Yes, your, your mind is going to be busy because we're so used to having active, overactive minds, yeah? And the spirit of confusion will enter through the mind and it, it will make so much noise up there that you can't listen to this, yeah? So um, don't be hard on yourself. When you first start, it's not going to feel natural and you're going to notice thoughts flooding in, flooding in, um, but just say, ah, oh, here we are, having another thought. Ah, oh, there's another thought. Ah, oh, look, 
you know, having another thought. Uh, eventually what will happen is you will start to become more and more comfortable with not having thought. You'll be able to go longer and longer and longer without actually having a thought. And then your heart will be able to speak to you. And it's going to speak to you in the way that God knows how to speak to you. Okay? Try not to force it. He also said, don't force it. Don't try and force an image in your eye. Um, don't try and force a thought in. Um, just wait and be patient. And, you know, look, I, I'm even going to say, and this wasn't from Michael, so it's just something that's popped into my head. You know, it, uh, I know in my case, I have received so much clarity since I've started my day Every morning, getting down on the floor, head down to the ground and all, and a complete submission to God. And I just say, what is it that you want me to do? Tell me what to do, make it clear, and I'll do it even if it's uncomfortable. So um, that, that may resonate for some, yeah? Um, but that was what Michael wanted me to share with you. And I don't know when I'll be posting next. In the meantime, uh, I'm just going to ask you to please keep your heart open, love one another, and um, don't judge, yeah? He doesn't like it. <laughs> okay. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.